Hello again everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're at MK Studios, really nice Dublin scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and we're parked up with the Fly by Wire mods A32 and X, um, which you guys know I love and I've been part of the project as a QA tester since uh, the beginning. So today we're going to go through something that's been requested a lot from quite a few of you guys, how to read metars, how to decode them, what all of the different parts of the meta are actually mean. Uh, Metar is basically a meteorological report and it gives you the weather data for the airport that you might be flying into or out from or diverting to and it helps you predict and understand roughly what you might uh, expect for weather on the way in so it allows you to then select your runway accurately um, and things like that. So I hope you guys find this useful. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below if you're new to the channel and give us a like and let me know what you think in the comments below as well. I'm going to give you guys a couple of examples because depending on what region of the world you're in you can see some different symbols and things on METARS and it's a good idea to know roughly what they mean at least. If you get stuck there are lots of websites online which actually help you decode the METARS. So it gives you an example of what they all mean effectively. So uh, we're at Dublin at the moment and uh, we can see here on the METAR it's on the top of the screen of the MCDU and also on the printed page here EIDW 081230Z and it goes on for those two lines there so what does that actually mean? Well the first bit should be hopefully quite uh, self-explanatory uh, basically that is the four letter airport code so at Dublin the four letter ICAO code is Echo India Delta Whiskey so that's what that is the next section is a time and a date. So 08 represents the day in which the metal was produced, so the eighth day of the month. And then the next bit is the time, so 12.30 Zulu on the eighth day of the month. That's the date and time that the report was generated. The next section then is the winds, and we've got 22009KT. And that is 220 degrees at nine knots. And that is the direction that the wind is coming from. So you would want to choose a westerly facing runway so that you've got a headwind. But then the next bit says 200 V260 and what that means is that it's a changeable wind direction. So the main wind, the mean wind is 220 degrees at 9 knots but actually the winds are variable so every now and again the winds will be changing direction and in this example they are tending to change between 200 degrees to 260 degrees but the mean average is 220 degrees. The next section is 9999 and uh, lots of people ask me what that means. Um, you might see 9999 you also might see CAV OK. Uh, they kind of mean basically the same thing and it, it means that ceiling, cloud ceiling and visibility are OK. So no cloud below 5000 feet roughly or the highest minimum sector altitude no cumulonimbus clouds, no towering cumulus at any levels and a visibility of 10 kilometers or more with no significant weather change. Then we've got FU 014, BKN 020 and that relates to clouds. So FU is few clouds at 1400 feet so when you see 014 it means uh, 1400. If you see 140 then it would be 14,000 and again broken BKN means we've got broken cloud at 020 so 2,000 feet and if we look at the live weather at the moment in the sim we can see the broken cloud and uh, we can also see pockets of few cloud as well but it's mainly broken we've got 16 slash 10 and that means that the temperature is 16 degrees Celsius and the dew point is 10 degrees Celsius and if there's no minus sign then it's a plus. And lots of people ask what dew point is. The dew point being 10 degrees Celsius that means that that is the temperature in which the water droplets in the air begin to condense and form dew. Um, so instead of them being uh, evaporated as a gas they start to become a liquid at that temperature. Q&H 992 or 0992 means uh, the air pressure setting. The air pressure at the moment is 992 hectopascals so we change our altimeter 
and we change the standby instrument as well. There we go. Now, a little tip on VATSIM. If you have, if you're connecting on the VATSIM network and you have a QNH of 992, then you would read that to the controllers as a QNH 992 hectopascals. And if it's above 1000, then you could just say QNH 1001, for example. So a nice little tip there for you guys that use VATSIM. And no SIG means that there's no significant change expected to the reported conditions in the next two hours. So that means that the weather that we've got at the moment should be pretty consistent for the next two hours. And there shouldn't be much of a significant change for that. Now compare that directly with the one below uh, for Manchester. And that's got some more data and it's also got some forward slashes uh, and a few other things as well. So EGCC, again it's the same process, so EGCC is the airport code, 081250Z is the 8th day of the month at 1250 Zulu when the report was generated. And then it says auto, that just means that the report's been generated automatically uh, rather than it being done manually. 180 Zero 05 knots means that the wind is 180 degrees at 5 knots, variable between 120 degrees and 230 degrees, and again there's some all the nines, or CAV OK as it's also known. SCT 010 means scattered cloud at 1000 feet above ground level, slash 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 means that the, there's no data about the cloud type. But we go to the next bit, it says broken cloud at 1400 feet, slash slash slash. And then the next section is TCU, and that is some significant information for us in relation to weather because it usually suggests that there's uh, going to be a storm or some heavy weather whilst uh, in the vicinity of the airfield. That could mean that we could have a bumpy approach, heavy rain could be expected as well shortly, um, it gives us a bit of a clue and it also gives us a clue about the cloud base and the cloud types. So where it says scattered 1000 broken 1400, it could give us a clue that actually the Tarin cumulus clouds could drop down with a base of about 1000 feet. So quite interesting that one. Um, if you see TCU then usually you could expect some poor weather. 13 degrees Celsius as the temperature, 12 degrees is the dew point and QNH 996 hectopascals there. Now the next example I want to show you guys is America. What if you're flying in the US? Uh, you can you can see some different codes in the US. And again, by, by me showing you this, hopefully you get a better understanding of some of the different quirks depending on where you're flying around the world. I hope you guys are finding this useful. Please do click like and subscribe down below while you're here as well. Hopefully it's giving you loads of tools so you can enjoy the flights that you're doing in the sim and work out learn to work out how to select your runways and things whilst you're inbound using a meta so KDFW then hopefully you guys will recognize that as Dallas Fort Worth in America and we can see there that 081153Z means that the report was generated on the 8th day of the month at 1153 Zulu which is at UTC We've got the winds there, and then we've got 10 SM, and SM means statute mile, and statute mile is different because when we're flying in the sim, we're using nautical miles all the time, uh, whereas a statute a statute mile is actually slightly longer than a nautical mile. Uh, being America, they they can use statute miles inside the METAR, so you can just punch in on a Google converter uh, if you're not quite sure. Effectively, one statute mile is 0.87 nautical miles so we can expect there that we would have um, visibility of 8.7 nautical miles in that instance but we don't need to worry about that too much we just know that it's not we, we might have some slightly reduced visibility whilst we're inbound few clouds 1600 feet few clouds at 15,000 feet so like I was mentioning earlier in the example and some particularly high level cloud here as well uh, above Dallas-Fort Worth today for this meta. We've got scattered cloud 
at 25,000 feet. Uh, above ground level as well, guys. Remember? 18 degrees Celsius is the temperature and dew point 16 degrees Celsius. And in America, they don't use hectopascals, they use inches of mercury. So you want to flick that dial across to in HG and you can see on the metal there a 2989 and that means that the altimeter is 2989 if you guys want to see what that would be in hectopascals you could just flick the collar and it will show you in HPA but make sure in America you've got it in inches of mercury and don't forget as well to set your standby instruments RMK means remarks and in America you'll get remarks and you get a whole load of stuff after that so loads of extra letters numbers and other things so AO2 then basically means that the station is an automatic station and it also has a piece of equipment in place that can discriminate and distinguish between the difference of rain and snow so it knows the difference between rain or snow at that particular metal station if you say if you see a01 then it means that it doesn't have the ability to recognize the difference between snow and rain so it will just still show as precipitation of some sort whereas an a02 station will be able to show you snow as well as rain separately quite clever slp is just a reminder of the sea level pressure in this instance it says that it's 1011 decimal 3 hectopascals so 113 SLP 113 sea level pressure 1011 decimal 3 so it takes the two digits that start off 110 decimal 3 uh, for sea level pressure if that's required for the type of flying you're doing T and this is where the temperature gets hidden temperature 01830156 so what does that mean that is basically just temperature is 18.3 degrees Celsius split that in the middle dew point 15.6 degrees Celsius that's all that means so draw a little invisible line in the middle split the two up the first bit is temperature the second bit is dew point 10222 is the maximum temperature in the last six hours so in this instance in the last six hours the highest temperature that they've had at Dallas Fort Worth has been 22.2 degrees Celsius and the minimum temperature next to it is 17.8 degrees Celsius so the final part 56010 that is just the trend of the way that the pressure is changing in the air so the 5 is the group indicator so a 3 hour pressure tendency in this instance the 5 indicates the fact that it's looking at a pressure trend over the next 3 hours the 6 shows the change so think of that one as a scale of 1 to 10 uh, 5 being in the middle 10 being the most change 1 being the least amount of change the last 3 numbers shows the actual increase or decrease um, 0, 1, 0 is actually a decrease in hectopascals so that would be 1.0 hectopascals so 56010 means that over the next three hours the pressure change is 6 out of 10 is going to decrease by 1 hectopascal that's it a lot of it you can just sort of write off and ignore sometimes you might also see a little dollar sign and you might wonder what that means that is just a maintenance blip so it just says that the uh, the metal station needs some maintenance if you see things like TS then it means that there's thunderstorms SN is snow if you're flying through areas of the world that are suffering from a hurricane or tornado at the time and you pull the metal in because of the nature of those weather events it should say specifically tornado or something like that at the big you know within the metal report really clear so you guys will be able to then see uh, it will say for example tornado and then it will say the time that it begins and ends and it will tell the location of it and it will say where it's moving so it will tell you if it's moving east from that location north west or south you know, for example if on the metal then you see R and a whole load of numbers next to it as well 
then that means the runway visual range at that airport. As a little example, just to explain, you might see within the Metar report R11 slash P6000 feet. So if it was R11, it would be runway 11, and then it would tell you that the runway visual range, if it was 6000 feet, it's telling you there quite clearly that runway 11, runway visual range is 6000 feet. So the big ones to watch out for then, the most dangerous ones really, for flying TCU, Towering Cumulonimbus, TSNO, Thunderstorm information not available, TS, Thunderstorm, SS, Sandstorm, for those of you who like to fly around uh, areas of desert within the sim, with those getting built into the, the weather engine of course, and uh, icing as well, look out for some low temperatures, SN for snow for example, gives you an idea that it's going to be quite cold. But there we go. I hope you guys have found this really useful. I know quite a few of you have been asking me to get around to completing this little tutorial for you guys. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Remember to hit like and subscribe as well while you're here. Join us as a frequent flyer. If you want to get started and learn some of the system depth within the Flabberwatt A320, the Aerosoft CRJ, uh, or get started on VATSIM, check out my playlists within the channel and I've got a whole host of playlists uh, for quite a few different aeroplanes and a load of VATSIM tutorials as well. Check out my live stream schedules while you're here as well and come and say hi next time I'm live. But in the meantime, as always, thanks everybody for watching.